some of the work I'm going to introduce you to is um, projects that we're working at at the University of Warwick currently and subsequently the University of Birmingham, where we're looking at reclaiming the materials and then reusing components and materials from the battery and remaking them into a battery again. So I'm just going to give you a bit of an introduction about some of those materials, what those materials are, and what we're doing to try and reclaim them and reuse them. So this gives you a little bit of an overview of a picture of what we start with and what we end up with in terms of a battery. So we start with the raw materials. Uh, we then manufacture them into the active materials that goes into our cell components, our electrodes. These electrodes are then manufactured into a cell with an electrolyte. These then go into a module and pack. They're integrated into an application and then currently they're disposed of. And what we would like to see is a second life application and ultimately can we actually reclaim those materials from that pack, that cell, back into the raw material phase to recycle back through this circular economy approach. And the bits I'm in particular going to talk about is these materials and reusing these materials in the cells ultimately. So this is a very complicated picture of a circular economy of batteries. Um, but it's a very interesting process in which we have cells that come in. If those cells were actually designed for disassembly and those packs were designed for disassembly, we could actually reclaim those materials a lot easier than we can at the moment. And I'll show you some of the ways that we are actually trying to reclaim those materials. Once they come in, we can either reuse the modules, reuse the packs, we can dismantle those packs, and what's very annoying with the current packs that are brought in and the modules is that they're glued, and it's really difficult to get the glue off to then extract the cells out. So again, going back to design for disassembly, can we actually design things in a better way so that we can actually extract the key components out of those at the end of life? Can we reuse those modules? Can we reuse those cells? Um, if we can't, then what happens to the materials that are contained within those cells, modules, and packs? And what we would like to see is different aspects of reuse and remanufacture. So if we take the cell apart, can we reclaim those components? So can we reuse the electrodes? Can we reuse the electrolyte? Can we reassemble from those components back into a working cell again? Or can we actually extract those materials out, the raw materials, so the the metal oxide components that go in, the polymers um, and the lithium salts. And the bits in particular that I'm going to talk about is the physical recovery of those components from a cell and also looking at trying to, um, in essence, reassemble from some of those comp components within a cell. So this is an example of a large pouch cell uh, from an automotive manufacturer. And we're now looking at trying to reclaim some of those components from within it. So this is actually the packaging. So what we've done, it's a very manual process at the moment, is we've opened the cell with a ceramic blade and we've removed the components out. And now we're left with the laminated aluminium and the tags that we can, which are nickel and aluminium as well, which we can then look to clean and reuse and remanufacture into a smaller pouch cell. Um, one of the bits that you can't see here because is the electrolyte. Um, this is slightly more difficult to extract because the electrolyte is a carbonate solvent which has a lithium salt in it. And as soon as you evaporate the carbonates out or the solvents, you're still left with the salt, so you need to wash it out. Um, but ultimately, these are reclaimable. The next step is the extraction of the cathodes and anodes. So we have a cathode on the left here, which is aluminium. On it, we have a... Uh, layered oxide material, which has uh, transition metal components, the aluminium current collector, a polymer binder, and carbon. And in the anode, we have a graphite active material on copper, um, and again, a binder with carbon. So if we can reuse these electrodes as they are, then we can remanufacture smaller cells without having to go right back to the beginning with the materials to remanufacture into the cells. And this is the separator. So those anodes and cathodes that you saw there are actually built with these separators in between. And we can just move the separators as they are. It's polypropylene, polyethylene. 
And the question is for this, is actually, is it worthwhile recycling it or not? Um, the cost of production of something like this is relatively low, but yet the cost of remanufacturing it or reusing um, is yet to be determined. So what we can do is actually look then at the, what components are in our cells and whether it is worthwhile actually reclaiming those compounds and materials or not. And what you see from this um, pie chart is a breakdown of the components of a cell, so the anodes and cathodes in the centre of the circle, and then you've got um, the electrolyte, which is a purple pouch, 5% in green, and the separator, 5% um, in yellow. And on the outside of that pie chart, what you've got is a breakdown of the components of the metals that go into that anode and cathode. And one of the things that stands out in particular is the proportion of the cathode is actually quite high compared to the proportion of everything else within the cell. In addition, that cathode contains cobalt, which is actually um, on the critical elements and strategic materials list for Europe and the US and, and other countries as well. And it also, mainly because it's mined in the Congo, so there's ethical issues around um, using cobalt. Um, we also have manganese and nickel contained within that cathode as well. Manganese is, is relatively cheap, but nickel is actually getting more expensive. And if we look at the anodes, then 20% of that is, is, part, is mostly graphite. And graphite is also on the strategic, strategic materials list because of the method of extraction and where it's extracted from. So the question is here, with all these materials which are potentially resource limited from mining, can we not start to reclaim these materials to reuse them back in our batteries again? Um, and this is part of the questions that we're asking in the projects that we're doing at the moment. So I'd like to introduce you to one of our uh, researchers. This is Rob. Um, what we're looking at not just about the component extraction, but about the materials extraction. And now what we're looking at doing is trying to extract the valuable elements or components of those aspects um, of those electrodes, the pouch formations. And the only way that we um, could think of doing it um, is actually to use a shredder. And this is by far, we've actually been through two shredders, believe it or not. Um, we've had to get a particular wee shredder so that it actually um, chops up the pouch cells in a particular way so we can extract those materials and then sort them properly. Um, and this is what we do. We have, a, you can see in the middle there, a cell that is going into the middle of the shredder. Um, on the right hand side, this is the waste that comes out. And then we can sort this waste to actually reclaim some of these transition metals and um, elements. And this is an example of what the components that we can uh, collect at the moment. So we've got aluminium at the top, still with a little bit of carbon on, we've got copper, we've got metal oxides and carbon at the bottom, and we've got the plastic separator at the side. So now we can look after that physical separation to look at the chemical, um, further chemical separation of these materials back into the precursors to go into that raw material flow chart again. And again, a complicated diagram, but I'd like to introduce you to a project that we've got with a variety of uh, companies in the UK. It's a Faraday Challenge project. We have um, several UK companies involved, including Iconichem, who actually are the only cobalt salt manufacturer in the UK. And what we're doing as part of this project is very similar to what I've shown you so far, is bringing the cells, dismantling the cells, separating them into components and looking at how we reuse those components to remanufacture our cells. Right from looking at the electrode reuse through to manufacturing the precursor materials that go back into our cathode manufacture uh, again. On the right hand side, what you see is our current recycling process um, in Europe and, that goes, yeah, and the US. And most of the stuff out the UK at the moment um, is collected and it gets shipped over to Belgium where it's burnt. Um, and this is what happens to our recycling waste. Surely there's a better way of reclaiming our materials and doing that. And actually creating value to the UK for UK industries as well. 
So one of the uh, things I'd like to just give you a taste of is um, some of the work that we've been doing at Warwick in reusing the electrodes that come out of the cells. And when the electrodes come out of the cells, they're actually covered in what's called an SEI layer, or a, a layer of the surface. This is an example of an anode. And what we're looking at doing here is removing that layer so that we can, uh, by laser ablation, and then patterning the material and the, and the electrodes, as you see here, to um, create a better performing electrode. So there was actually um, a video here on the left-hand side, which is a laser which is being built by MSOLV uh, down in Oxford. And what they can do is actually use laser ablation to create some extremely nice um, patterns on our electrodes, which give us an advantage over what's currently being produced. Um, by tuning the laser, we can create different patterns. We can uh, maximize electrolyte uptake and maximize power and um, energy performance. Um, and the second aspect I'd like to project I'd like to introduce you to is another is a Faraday Fast Start project which is run out of the University of Birmingham, which is called Relib. And here this is looking at the bigger picture of the battery recycling from robotic disassembly of the batteries through to um, the specifics of the cell, the materials of reformation and the reuse. And as part of this project, we're also looking at the policy, legal and regulatory aspects of batteries, battery recycling, what happens to the battery at the end of life, and also the economics um, and the value chains associated with that. There is an LCA part as well, which could be interesting to talk about. So, just as a quick summary, um, what we need to do is really look at the components and how we can claim those strategic elements and those um, critical materials that are involved in the manufacture of batteries, as there is no infinite resource. So what happens when we actually come to a point where we don't have access to those minerals anymore? But what we can do is we can look at the batteries as a bigger picture of the bigger picture of the circular economy. Can we reuse the materials as they are, the components? Can we reuse the cells? Um, is there a second life application and can we reclaim, remanufacture uh, batteries from those materials. Thank you. <laughs>